The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, everyone. Sorry to disappoint you. Larry, I believe, is in London, not able to do his show today. And uh, this is Basil Chapman. I just finished the Tiger Technicians Hour. I have some time. I have to leave just before the end of the show. Got a meeting, so I wasn't able to change anything there. But I, I'm going to be able to do this. And what's really important about this particular hour is this is the exact hour for my subscribers. They'd be wanting to see whether there was some kind of strength to the upside and just a very quiet stair step move to 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 regulate the selling that we thought would be earlier in the morning. And we did have a Chapman Wave high reading trend gauge, which said there should be more than a nine to eleven point E mini. S&P rally that helps the market. It did that earlier on, and now it's going to have to try to do it again. Uh, we'll see if that happens. Now, uh, the reason, another reason why I thought it was appropriate, I had a lot of questions that I never actually got to in my show, and I thought, okay, I've got just a moment here. I'd like to be able to get to it. Uh, let me move this away. I think I can do that. Yes, I can. So let me run these numbers really quickly. The Dow itself, the cash is up 18 at 34,698. In the Chapman Wave methodology, I'll just do this really quickly uh, because we're, always, we're having a lot of new people uh, coming in, to, especially to the den. That's really exciting. Um, we, I try to identify the lowest low bar. I count each successively higher peak. I, I grade them. I've been getting stocks and commodities magazine for 30, I don't know how many years, just for decades. I've never yet read anything where someone grades the actual peaks. So in this particular case, um, I, I, I notate them alphabetically, sequentially, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Um, the first peak is A. If it doesn't take out the starting point, the next peak is B. It doesn't matter how low it goes after that, as long as it doesn't take out the starting point. Then you upgrade the, the, um, the buy signal to a buy mode. What that implies is that there should be at least, at least four higher peaks to a peak D. What does a peak D mean? I'll just scroll to the left side. The Dow made a high at peak D in the Chapman Wave methodology at 36,952.65, all-time high on the 5th of January, pulls back. And then what did it do? It made a pack because at peak D, other things can happen. It can recycle to the upside. I'll be talking about that in my webinar coming up on the uh, Wednesday, April the 13th, 4 o'clock to 5.30. And of course, uh, you'll be able to get it. It's archived. It's for subscribers, and you can become a subscriber. Remember, it's a it's a 30-day money-back guarantee if you're unhappy about anything. And there, once you're in, for free, you'll be able to get all those webinars, eight, nine, ten, eleven webinars that I've done, all based on the Chapman methodology and how it's used. And uh, we'll do this in real time, even because that's what's the use of anything if you're not doing it in real time. So look, we made a high, a low. At about 10:27, at about 45:19, uh, 45:18 in the E mini, and then he went peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, peak E, and then it pulls back. I I'm, I just decided I'd keep in the Fibonacci numbers. I like those. Uh, sometimes it looks just too messy, and I just get rid of them. Um, and it went to a peak. And this is this a new, an old peak F, or is this a brand new? A leg A. Well, no, it's a, P, a leg B, F slash B, because there's the new start of a move. There's that low that wasn't taken out, so this could be what I call a gray A. And look what we're doing. The MACD is making this second arch formation. That's a good sign. Stochastic is improving. It's not great. It's 67%. On balance volume, the blue line is okay. But from that moment that it switched to green, this nine period moving average above the 14, went green. As long as it's green, it should continue higher. We'll see if that happens, right? It's just the one-minute chart, but it's the same application to the 10-minute chart. The 10-minute chart made right here. I was on air when we did this. I believe it was way back a few days ago. We made this. I'm scrolling to the left. Can we keep going? Can we get? Okay, you're going to have to stop at some point. There was that peak D. 
uh, back at about three o'clock, uh, just just at the close, four o'clock on, what date was that? 29th. And look at that. And my rule of thumb is that a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patients. Uh, it could maybe take a stab at moving uh, above, but once it does that, it's bound to come back in. And if it takes out the left side, the, the, the lower rectangle low, you can go quite a bit lower before it tries to go back because it's always so quick that it didn't have a chance to say goodbye to its friends in the rectangle formation. It goes back and then it pulls back one more time. Look how long this lasted. This is a 10 minute chart and it goes from about four o'clock on the 28th all the way to right here when it finally broke down. Uh, that's the rectangle, let's call it right there. When it broke down at 11 o'clock on the 30th. And that's a 10 minute chart. So anyway, these are techniques that, you know, when Larry looks at it, I'm sure he's looking at A to B equals C to D. Uh, we had that this morning. Uh, so in the meantime, back at the ranch, let's just do this. Uh, let's get out of that. Or what I was looking at was the patterns and the patterns say that within the context of the peak A, peak B, fourth highest peak is where other things can happen. What did we do just the other day? We made a peak D with a little doji candle, I call it the Chapman Wave silent doji, when either the day before or the day after a high or a low, this very quiet little doji, if you did a scan, you'd never find it because you'd be looking for the exact turn. But if it's the day before, the day after, I call it the silent doji candle. And you've got to be careful because if it pulls back, it could pull back quite sharply. Well, we certainly did that yesterday down 550. But look at the day. We held the 14-period moving average. The MACD is still good. None of these are techniques that Larry uses. He, he, he never looks at moving averages. He always makes a joke about them. Although the jokes are a little less over the last uh, 10 years or so because he's seen that sometimes it's, let's face it, Larry, Tom, Tommy, uh, Dave, Steve, myself, we all respect one another's techniques. And the reason why we even take the opportunity when we get it to listen to the shows of our other hosts is because everyone has something that they've spent not a, a little time, but a long time working on, and they really know how to use these techniques. So what I always say is if you wake up in the morning and you always wake up on the left side, but the day you come out on the right side, it rains. Maybe you can use that, but it's better to have some other techniques as well. So we have a myriad of techniques. I have my Sears and Roebuck toolbox, and I'll just make it real simple. If in the next three days, the Dow closes decisively under the 200 period moving average, which is at 34,400, I have to consider that, yep, we've made that peak D and it's more than just a nominal high. It's going to be a high, more intermediate term. And all I can say is that that's going to be really important. If any time next week we take out 35,372, it doesn't have to be on a close. We just have to take it out. That's going to be really important. And that says internal strength is selective and it's favoring, it's favoring the, uh, in this particular case, it would be the Dow. Okay, so enough with that. There's a ton to look at. Let's just see what uh, the U.S. bonds are doing. I know Larry always looks the bonds. Uh, bonds are down 1.132nd uh, uh, at 149 and 32nd. So it's made a peak A. It's off the low. It's trying its best. And look at this inside track, Chapel Wave propellant zone right here in the weekly chart. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. So um, let, let's do this because I did some of it yesterday and someone asked me, could I, a couple of people actually said, could just do some of that again because we, we, there were a lot of implications. So we're looking at wheat, which is trading at 1,006 and three quarters. What's really important is that big spike up to 1363 and a half. Remember that, that might change because of continuous contract, but the high of the 8th of March pulled back and did the dreaded H pattern successfully. It did another one. So basically what we had is the lowercase H went to a repeated arch formation, forming a lowercase M right there and then took out the left side low and my rule of thumb is that if you do that successfully in other words if it pulls back and breaks underneath the left side low and closes you can do a one-to-one -one of the arch formation and that just says be careful because there's a chance that this 50 period moving average which is acting as support in wheat could in fact see a pullback towards the 956 level, it's at 1007. So it's making lower lows and lower highs. That's the indication of a trend. What is a trend? Trend usually, it's a very simple way of looking at it, it could be more complex, but to keep it as simple as possible, high highs and higher lows says that you're in an uptrend, lower highs and lower lows says you're in a downtrend. And you have to look at the time frame. This is the daily, but the weekly chart has a straight up single leg up to where a peak D, and then it failed. I know I, a question came in: Could you talk about that Chapman wave, uh, Roman candle? Yeah, well, let's just do it. I have a technique that I do. I only I only use about three or four candles in the in the uh, candlestick formations. Um, and two of them are my own discovery. One is the the Roman candle, which means that near high, if you see a a gap up opening and then a fractional tiny little wick because it's called a Roman candle because when you light that candle whoosh and that's exactly what happens there's a price that plummets and then closes a half to three quarters off the low that's the that's the characteristic I always look for then the rule of thumb is the long wick if in the next session or within two sessions there is a price movement that holds in a shorter time frame for a certain amount of time, you say, uh, if it's a 120 minute chart, I'll usually say if it's for 90 minutes, if it has that 90 minute candle close underneath halfway of the wick, in this case, it would have been 
uh, 11, uh, 12, 40, uh, 12, 40. Um, it says, be careful because you're very quickly going to test the low and probably break the low. In this case, it did both that. It broke the low. It created an inverted Chapman Wave Roman candle, which says if at any point you go halfway above that wick, you can have a move towards the top. Well, it failed. It didn't do that. It made the lowercase h. Look at the MACD failing. Look at the stochastic failing. Look at the nine period moving average. The green line is still way above the 14. And finally, a few days ago on the second arch formation, it took out that left side low. So the weekly charts is the question in the den is, could the IAI make a Chapman Wave Eiffel Tower? That's this IAI, which is the, the iShares Broken Dealer ETF. Um, uh, oh, was that? Oh, no, Apple. Could Apple do that? Uh, a huge single leg, A to the upside, and then a failure pattern? I would say absolutely, but I don't think so. I see technical strength in Apple on, on the daily basis. I see technical strength, the 9 above the 14 in the weekly basis. It might not go all that much further, but it is definitely in a sideways trading range rather than about to plummet. That's just my estimation now. I'll change my mind if it starts to trade at 169 and it's at 173 right now. So it's a good question. Now let's go back to what we were looking at, the Eiffel Tower in W, continuous contract, wheat. Um, this is just wheat. This is the weekly chart, spirals up. And look at these red candles. When, when we think that uh, wheat, you know, bread basket of, of, of Europe and, and uh, all the, the, uh, the whole area, uh, between you know I mean, Ukraine is, is is this is this is devastating. How the farmers going to get the wheat to market, etc. And yet look what's happened. You've had this huge emotional spike, gap up, fills the gap, making lower lows. So so far, all I can say is, unless wheat on Friday's close a week from today is able to close above 195 to say I'm back in the range. I see there's a chance here of a little bit more weakness before it has another big pop to the upside if it's going to do that. But if it fails and goes under 896, can it really do that? That's the Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down. And look at this wick in the monthly chart. What? This is the longest wick. I mean, it's amazing, right? Look at this. This is a weak continuous contract. Had a high. Uh, these letters change because it gets smoothed out, but the, the letters are exactly correct they're in the wrong place though uh, and look at that spiral in the uh, continuous contract to february of 2008 up at 2260 uh, and it comes down to a low of 487 was that in a bear market and that, look at this beautiful cup formation so it is working its way higher and you can't ignore that look at we uh, look at soybeans soybeans um, look at that stair step move fabulous move in the monthly chart uh, peak B is now underway because the last month was a lower high. Um, looking at it, am I going to do the right thing now? Yes. Look, peak D in the weekly chart. Remember how important D and E is? Look at this E, and then it makes a cup formation within the rectangle. It goes to the D just under the previous high. That's the rule of thumb. And now it's arching over. So these commodities are actually pulling back. And what's fascinating to me is we are so long for subscribers to open and call the DB Agriculture Fund, and as an overall fund, look where it is. It's just digesting gains in the second arch formation within the big rectangle. So patterns repeat, they're fractals of human nature, and human nature repeats the same things over and over. Uh, Polo says a crisis takes a much longer time coming than you think, and then it happens much faster than you would have thought. Uh, Rediger Dornbush. Thank you. That's uh, Dave White. Don't forget, we've got great shows. Dave White's show is at 2 o'clock in the afternoon after Steve Rhodes, which is at 1. Um, okay. A couple of things. So that's the uh, DBA, DB Agriculture Fund. We've been on since the 13th. Hit 22.64. We're taking a little bit off, and it's at 21.93, holding very nicely. It looks to me like it's a pattern that you'd have to consider a failure pattern if it closes on a weekly basis below 21 because that'll be under the 14 period moving average, so far holding very well. The dollar. Oh, I didn't talk about this yesterday. I spoke about the dollar. I told you where it is, and I spoke about the arch formation. This is the upside down one. This is the second arch of the M formation. But what I forgot to say, I think I forgot to say it, is that a rectangle formation can last a lot, I did say this, a lot longer than your patience. But most importantly, the dollar 
has got the pattern that says, I'm stuck in a range. Just don't worry about me unless you're a short-term trader and I'm going towards the 9770s. You can buy me because I'm going back to the 9330, 90, 9940 area, and then I'll be reversing back. At some time, that won't work but it's worked over and over again since the uh, beginning of March. Uh, every week we've been up and down and up and down, but all within the range. So I'm going to extend the rectangle formation even further. And that's important. Look, the MACD is failing. The stochastic's horrible at 36. And yet that nine period moving hasn't yet crossed negative. If it does and the dollar starts to go below 97.50, that's going to be important. Why? Because then you will see the euro start to break to the upside. It's not doing it. Basil Chap sitting in for the hour of Larry Pizzavento. I'll be back in a moment. The Dow's up 42. The S&P's up 42. Welcome back to Invest are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the tiger's den trading room only at tfnn.com the tiger's den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So coming back to this is Basil Chapman. Uh, Larry is, is away. I, I'm, I'm using the time because there were a lot of things that want, uh, people had asked about and I didn't finish in my show. So Apple made a peak C1, C2 t uh, top like a peak D. Uh, that was around about just before 11 o'clock. Uh, that was yesterday uh, at about the 179 area. Pulls back, has a rogue wave spike to the upside. 
because the technicals are weak. If you were short, you'd be correct in being short. Uh, but usually what happens in the rogue wave, it just breaks the previous high long enough for the people who said, oh, I should never have sold. Oh, I should have sold. I'm going to buy some of it back right now. And for the shorts to say, what am I thinking about? Shorting Apple, am I crazy? Um, I'm, I'm covering. And then it pulls back, and it, 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 within moments, it's back to where it was previously. That's exactly what happened here, Chapman Wave, Rogue Wave. And then it continues on its merry way down. It made a big arch formation at the two. Look how long it took to break the 200 period exponential moving average. Do you need it as an important tool? No, not unless you need it. But all of a sudden, this became when you were up there at 179. Did you care about the 170? Uh, five uh, 200 period moving average uh, no all of this the 200 period moving average at 175 no but then it, all of a sudden it goes up holds it as support tries hold and then boom it breaks down and plummets down and there's the pattern that we call the lowercase h they can go to an m it's called it the arch formation if it takes out the left side low of 10 uh, 10 past 10 this morning of 172.51 if it doesn't close back above that within two bars, maybe three bars, that's a negative, and it could have a one-to-one -one of the 174 level down to 172, uh, what is it, 50, 172, yeah, 50 to the downside. So that's the way I look at those. It's just a pure technical thing. Uh, now let's look at this. So here's the question. So within the context of the euro, yes, it's had a rally. It's making higher highs and higher lows. But if you look at the weekly chart, it stopped dead at the 14-period moving average. It's only been able to close above that 14-period moving average once since it broke down uh, in June, the week of June the 18th, 2021, when it was up at 1.21. Uh, and here it is at 1.10, and it's struggling. And that says to me that the dollar still has internal strength, and therefore you've got to look at it closely. Look at the USD. JPY, we did this yesterday. This is the um, this is the dollar yen, Japanese yen. What I'd said is a quick pullback from a peak E at 125.10 in the continuous contract, three bars, two of the bars. This is now the third bar that's held the nine period moving average. And look at the move today, up a dollar point one two five at 122.82. And basically what this is saying is that there's still some internal strength, and I'm gonna draw this in for now. We'll draw it in a little conservatory, conservatively and say, this is the trading range I'm anticipating for the yen, uh, shorter term going into next week. But it is a leg E and at a peak E, you've got to be careful. We haven't made a peak E. If there's no high above 125.10 in the continuous contract next week, that becomes a peak E in the weekly chart. And what I'd said is, look at the leg E in the monthly chart. Look at this beautiful left side, right side price time match in an H pattern that formed a cup formation going back to, to within uh, you know, a, a very narrow range of the previous major high that was back in June of 2015. And here we are in, in April of 2022, and we're coming back to that level. So there is internal strength in the yen because it usually moves in the same direction as the dollar but not necessarily the same percentage that's my analysis uh, a couple of questions came in yeah we can have a quick look at those fce is is um uh wells fargo trading at 48.30 underneath the previous high uh, this one is like many of the, the bank stocks that have gone to a peak c that's usually not a good sign when it fails at a c and comes back down but the fact that it does go to a C says there's a little bit uh, enough of internal strength that says it could hold the, the low that was made in the 45s is trading at 48.30 monthly chart weekly charts peak E monthly charts peak D I think this is I, I think that the financials are going to have somewhat of a difficult time even though rates seem to be moving higher I mean we, we're along Bank of America a uh, Bank of America from the 31 area taking a little bit off. It's the longest period we've had. And usually we have it for uh, six to eight months and then we start taking off as it comes back down. Then we'll get it again later on. This time we got it, it went all the way from 31 to 50.11, taking a little bit off. And he has that peak D and it's starting to fail. So I, I think the financials are going to be in a little bit of trouble here. As I'm looking at it, a peak C in the XLF holding quite well considering, now of course it has 
um, the RKB, which is uh, above its, uh, there you go. So Berkshire Hathaway, that makes a big difference. BRK for big, uh, B, look at that. Uh, it makes a peak F all time, all time high four days ago. I mean, what a monster, huh? A G stash C in the weekly chart, it's in its own world. And this is another reason why I think that we're gonna be watching very closely Buffett's stock, Berkshire Hathaway, because he has he has a finger in more than a finger, he probably has a fist or an arm in so many of the pies that this is gonna be really, really important. Uh, why? Because if it starts over the in April, if there's a plunge below three thirty in Berkshire Hathaway, uh, let's call it three twenty. A close below 320, that just says, watch out, this economy is doing terribly. At this particular point, it's saying, well, in the sectors that he's in, holding not too bad. So that's, that was the one. I did this earlier. I did this in my show. I was asked about, where did I put that? Yeah, I was asked about lithium, LIT. LIT is the, um, the this is the ETF for Global X Lithium and Battery Tech Fund. So holding just above the 200 period moving average, made an all-time high at a peak C doji candle in the um, monthly chart. And this is one reason why, if I look at enough of these stocks that have only made Bs and Cs, and they're really important, my suspicion is that in some areas we're going to have higher highs to come. But this is a really important period. Dow's now back down 16. s and down 6. Today should have been a V-shaped turnaround with the Dow up 135 as we go into mid-afternoon and then closing towards the high of the day. So this is not a good sign so far. Um, we've got a peak D in lithium, LIT 77.93, up 95 cents. Peak D at 97.13 back in November of this past year. Plummets down, the MAGD is very weak in the weekly charts, the casting's very weak, but the price is moving nicely above the 14 period moving average. It's a start. To repairing a lot of damage, and we'll see what happens with the uh, the daily chart. So this is one that I do like. We don't own it. We have something uh, in that area, but we don't own it. Um, yeah. So at this point, it's holding quite well. Now the next thing we're looking at is uh, Caterpillar, because of the uh, uh, Caterpillar heavy duty equipment. This is also part of farm equipment, etc. Um, it's pulling back a little bit to 220.92. Uh, down at dollar ninety. Um, okay, so we've got a section to go, and then I think I'm gonna have to leave early today. So um, I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Dow's down eleven, S&P's down five, and we want to look at LC. And this is live cattle failing A, B, C, struggling right here. I'll be back in a minute. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back. Basil Chapman sitting in for the hour. Larry Pizzamento's hour as he's away. 125.77 with a 122 round number low on the 9th of February for RHI Robert Half International. This is Jobs. Rallies sharply, uh, well, pulls back very sharply to the 106 area. Rallies to 122. And then what does it do? It makes this arch formation. Well, if this arch, arch formation continues, this is saying. There's going to be a problem in the jobs market, but it would be under 108 to 106 support, closing under that level. Anytime in April, it's going to be a negative. The monthly chart says, yeah, potential double to, uh, uh, head and shoulders pattern, but it's holding very well within the context of the rectangle formation. Monthly chart is a peak F. It could be an instant restart, Chapman Wave peak D, with an alternate count. The technicals in the monthly chart are still really strong, not so much in the weekly, and definitely in the daily. It just turned with the nine period uh, below the 14 period moving average. So this says, got to be a little bit careful. That's Robert Half. The other one is Manpower. I wonder if they're going to change the name. Manpower did the H pattern at a peak D underneath the 200 period moving average in the daily. This one looks much weaker. And there was a third one which I don't think I've ever done. KFY, what's KFY? Uh, that was the question is, yeah, KFY is up a little bit. KFY is Corn Ferry. Oh, Corn Ferry, I've seen the name so many times. This is what they do. Peak D in the weekly, in the monthly chart, pulled back in the, in the uh, weekly chart is very weak. It's gone to peak A, peak B, it's at a peak C under the 200 period moving average now. Um, in the day, yeah, this is just saying, watch these man, these, these job market um, ET, uh, stocks, because that's really important. All right, a couple of things I wanted to do. High grade copper, high grade copper is holding very well. Uh, continuous contract within that rectangle made an arch formation at 4.72. If it pulls back under 4.6 any time in the next week, that's going to be negative. Uh, live cattle I was doing before <coughs> at the 200 period moving average stalls has been there for about three weeks now it just can't get going so that just says not acting all that well coffee we did yesterday coffee is trading up very nicely um, you see when we talk about higher highs and higher lows this is now a very close I'm going to put the up arrow in because it's already at a peak C in leg C I haven't had the full technical confirmation. The 9 hasn't crossed over the 14. But this is a peak A. This is a peak, oops, a peak A. This is a peak B. And this is a leg C. It's a modest rally, but a rally nevertheless in coffee at 229. It has to hold 222 and a half support. If it's able to get well, even just a little higher than the left side high of the 9th of March at 
to 35.90 would be a target. So let's see how that does. Uh, the weekly chart is improving, but it's not great. Monthly chart is still holding very well. A couple of things I want to look at just as we're about to wrap up. So I'm going to be wrapping up because when the next uh, bell rings, I'm going to have to be out of here. Uh, thank you, Polo says. Your check is in the mail. Um, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to do this because I always learn. When you teach, you also learn. That's my, my expression. It's something, if I have the chance, I just like to be able to look at these charts um, in a in an objective way. I haven't looked at co uh, coffee before. We looked at it yesterday, and here it is, a little uh, making a new recovery high. That's important. Um, so a couple of things as we're about to wrap up. The VIX index. The VIX index is trading, the uh, X is trading at 20.51. It hasn't really started to move higher. So is this a big negative that we haven't yet seen the uh, volatility index? Even yesterday, I said, if the VIX starts to trade in the 22s, watch out. 550 points in the Dow, down 60-something in the S&P, and the VIX index still closed only at the 20 area. In fact, where it is now, at, at just about. So if the VIX really starts to move higher, any time next week, any day next week, not intraday, but if it closes towards the 2280, 2350 area, I suggest to you that's where you will start to see fund managers pulling money out of the market and buying more protection. It's at the closer. You can't just have intraday and then a pullback. But as it stands right now, to see the Dow having such a big pullback yesterday and then follow through down today, but still with a technical veracity, I mean, everything so far is still looking good. That says to me that this internal strength Price will negate that. In other words, a close below 34,300, 34,200 uh, would say, oh, no, this is it's it's done for the moment, certainly in the daily, and that's going to impact the weekly chart. But that monthly chart at this particular point is still holding well, and that's even for the S&P, which uh, it was a real big pullback yesterday from where it was. That was a fantastic-looking candle. So... That changes if the S&P, just on a shorter-term basis, by next week sees a pullback under 44.82, and then you start to see the 44.41, uh, the that is the 50-period uh, moving average. So these are all all areas that you're going to be looking at if there's going to be a, a really strong failure pattern. So with that said, um, my bias now is that we still have only long positions. We haven't initiated a short normally at a peak D in the Dow. I start looking at some kind of uh, short position. This time I felt that the strength there was just enough for me to say, hold off, let's see how it handles the next couple of days. Well, we'll see how it closes today, Friday. We're down 52 in the Dow, and we're down 9 in the S&P, and it's only 11.48 a.m. Eastern time. Um, we'll see what happens. I'm going to be wrapping it up as, we, as I hear the break coming up. Folks, check out, well, first of all, check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. And if you sign up for my my service, you automatically get my webinar coming up on the 13th of April. But there are also numerous um, free webinars that you'll be able to go to that I've had that are archived. Uh, that's number one. Number two is check out the Dan for a dollar a year. It is just uh, the amount of information that just keeps pouring through the Dan is fabulous and really pertinent stuff. Um, yeah, and good questions come in. I looked at most of them uh, just as we were about to go to the to the final break for me, not the final break for the day. Exxon is holding it at a peak D. How many peak Ds have we seen just today? Peak D in the daily, peak D in the weekly, peak a leg E in the monthly, and it's holding the 83.12 area. I think as a longer term position, it's still holding really well. Shorter term, I think there's a chance that it could pull back just a little bit, and then you'd have to have a look at it if you're looking to, to buy it. But that's ExxonMobil, multinational oil company. XLE, oh, question came in right now. XLE, same thing, holding at the higher range, just consolidating huge gains, uh, going sideways. I suspect the energy spider fund is going to be active for quite a while, even if there are sharp pullbacks. So with that said, I don't see the, no, we don't hear. Uh, there it is. 
So, folks, thank you for being here. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay tuned. You've got a fabulous program. We've got Think of Swim coming up. Then you've got Steve Rhodes. You've got Dave White. You've got Tom O'Reilly. What more could you ask for? Have a great weekend. See you on Monday. Thanks, man. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So the question is, uh, yeah, I'm just doing this as the one-minute e-mini chart. And also, I decided I would keep in, although I thought it looks a little messy, some of the FIB numbers. They're using FIB numbers perfectly today. They did that yesterday as well. Um, I, so let me just go through. A couple of questions came up. I'm going to do this real quickly. The IAI, which is the iShares Broken Dealer ETF, which we've been long uh, since uh, the day after the law of March 2020, um, 2020. Yeah, um, what we're looking at is uh, within the context of it rallying at 100 to 116.25, pulling back. It's making this 200 period moving average arch formation. And the question is, can you talk about the brokerage area and why you've always said that this is a benchmark for you to look at in the general market? I'll do that because what I, I've, I've just done now. I want to the last segment. Okay, what I what I I want you to do. I 
I'm able, I, I just got a message, Larry, I believe, I'm not sure, but I don't think Larry's able to do his show, the next show, and I had a whole bunch of questions, and I have my webinar coming up a week from tomorrow, so I want to discuss things that I'll be doing there. I want you to go through a number of the commodities. They're really important at this particular point. So I'll do some, I can't stay for the last segment of Larry's show. I have to go somewhere to, go. I've got a meeting I have to get to. So as it stands right now, my, my stance is, that we are still bullish. We got that low from just under 33,000 in the Dow Diamonds. We are long, we've added to our very long-term long position. We've got a nice trading position. Taking a little bits off as it got to that peak D, a leg D, that's what we always do. Did not have any short position there. Usually at that point, I started looking at the inverse. I see strength, I might be totally out of my mind, but I see enough strength at least to keep us buoyant for a little bit so we can make some decisions. That's the way I'm looking at it right now. Selectivity is a, is a watchword. I'm gonna wrap it up now, I'll do the news, but I'll be doing uh, at least the, uh, a good part of the hour of Larry's show. Remember, I can't do trade what you see. That's Larry's show, but I can use up that time. I can discuss. When Larry looks at my charts and I look at his, we often see the same thing. Using our both our different techniques, so we'll try to put that up.